Hello viewers, welcome to lesson 4 of the Equity Masterclass by Already Late, your favorite channel for anything related to money. In the previous lesson, we saw the three personalities of yours and how you should manage these in the stock markets. In this lesson, we will see how to classify stocks and how to use these classifications to get the best out of your equity investments. Let me start with a quick trivia question. How many shares are listed and active on the Bombay Stock Exchange? The answer is 4196 as of 10th December 2020. Of these, roughly 2000 shares get traded on a daily basis. If you want to invest in stocks, this is your universe. And all you have to do is just select a few stocks from this universe of 2000 stocks. Pretty simple, right? Well, it's definitely not simple, but it's not as difficult as finding a needle in the haystack. To make things a little easier, we divide stocks into multiple categories. Each of these types or each of these categories have certain common traits, certain common characteristics, which will help us to filter from the 2000 odd shares. The first way to classify shares is by using market capitalization as a criteria. Market capitalization you know, sounds very complicated. In very simple words, market capitalization or market cap as it is commonly called is an indicator of the size of the company in terms of its market price. It is calculated by multiplying the number of shares available for trading with the price of each share. If you look at the formula, there are two ways in which a company can have a high market cap large number of shares available for trading or high price per share or in fact the combination that's both of them a company that issues a large number of shares is typically a big company itself most likely among the top players in the industry further we know that share prices are just a reflection of the value of the company and a high price is usually an indicative of good business fundamentals in terms of market cap, we commonly divide shares as large cap, mid cap and small cap. Large cap are those companies which have a high market capitalization. These are companies that are matured, have large financial resources and usually a lot of cash too. The growth might not be very high, but it definitely is steady. Large cap stocks are the most desired stocks in case of an economic uncertainties because these companies have enough strength to withstand a long period of economic slowdown so business is down no problem they can sustain hence large cap stocks tend to perform the best during these times the times of economic uncertainties after large caps the next category is mid cap stocks these are those companies which are smaller in size as compared to the large caps they are expected to grow at a faster rate than the large cap companies and as a result are expected to give you higher returns than their large cap peers. They could be on track to becoming a large cap stock of the future. So a mid cap today could be a large cap of the future. What we need to be careful about is future aspects of growth. There could be a scenario where a mid cap company may not survive the competition from their large cap competitors. There could also be a scenario that the company is dealing with a product which has a limited market potential, may be operating in a very small niche and hence may not grow further than what it is currently. There could also be a scenario that a mid cap company was actually a large cap company that is actually losing market share to other players. A mid cap stock facing any of these situations may not give you the desired returns. These are the risks associated with investing in mid cap stocks. The last category of stocks is small cap stocks. These are the smallest companies. They are generally small either because they are new in the markets or their business is limited and they do not have the financial resources required for quick expansion. Now, because they are small, there also is a potential for them to grow the fastest. The percentage-wise growth would be the fastest in small cap companies. This makes them 
highly attractive as the returns could be multifold if the company registers a phenomenal growth. On the flip side, these companies are vulnerable to any economic slowdown. Small cap stocks tend to perform the best in a robust economic environment where everything is going good, there is a lot of growth in the economy, small caps tend to perform the best in those situations. So now we have understood what is a large cap, what is a mid cap and what is a small cap company. I am sure you have a very uh, obvious question in mind. How do you decide if a stock is a large cap stock, a mid cap stock or a small cap stock? Is there any size of market cap, okay, a few thousand crores or something like that, which is predefined? Now, while the question is obvious, the answer is not very obvious. There is no standard definition of a large cap, mid cap or a small cap company. For mutual funds, SEBI has classified top 100 stocks in terms of market capitalization as large cap, the next 150 as mid cap and all others in the market as small cap companies. This might not be the most accurate way of categorizing. Why? Now just le let's take a simple example. At current market levels, the market cap of 100th share is around 32,600 crores and 101st company has a market cap of 32,200 crores. Now, do you think it is fair to call one stock large cap and the other one mid cap? Any kind of rigid classification is inaccurate as market cap changes every day and in fact within the day as well. My advice to you would be to consider stocks with market cap over 25,000 crores as large cap, those between 10,000 and 25,000 crores as mid cap and the rest as small cap. And please use your judgment for those stocks which are very near to the extreme end. Now, what if somebody is just around 24,800? Should it be 25? Should it be between 10 and 25? So use your judgment there. If I were to break the top 500 stocks, the BSE 500 index, into large, mid and small based on my suggested range, you will have 130 large cap companies, 213 mid cap companies and 157 small cap companies. If you want the list of these 500 companies, please leave your details on the link on your screen. The same link is also available in the video description. You can just click, fill in the details and I will share this data with you. After looking at dividing stocks on the basis of market capitalization, let us move to the next way of categorizing stocks. Stocks can be categorized as growth stocks and income stocks. Growth stocks are those stocks where businesses are witnessing rapid growth. These companies typically give very low dividend and use the available cash for growth purposes like expansion and increased investment in research and development or even acquiring smaller companies. Now, growth companies grow faster than the industry average growth and investors tend to reward these companies with higher valuation because they are expecting future growth to be continuing. On the other side, income stocks are those stocks which are also growing but the growth is steady unlike the growth stocks. These companies are usually cash rich and have limited investment opportunities for the business to expand within the same industry. These stocks might see low appreciation in the prices but they usually compensate with higher dividends. Why don't you tell me some of the growth stocks or income stocks in the Indian stock markets? Just, you know, let's try to learn together. So now that you know uh, large cap, mid cap, small cap, and you also know growth stocks, income stocks, the next question is, why, why do you need to know these? Or rather, I would say, how do you use this knowledge into practice? How do you put this in practice? Now, these categories will help you to decide where your investments should be made. For instance, if you are a new entrant in the equity markets, it is best you restrict your investments initially at least to large cap stocks as these are the safest among all the stocks. Your losses will be limited even if you go wrong with your investment decision. On the other extreme is the small cap stocks which is suitable for those investors who have a high appetite for risk and have enough knowledge to understand the business fundamentals of the company as well as the industry dynamics. Similarly, 
those looking at steady dividend income with relatively lesser risk should look to invest in income stocks, while those who are aggressive risk takers should definitely look at growth stocks as an investment option. The table that you see now on your screen gives you a complete picture of the risk, return and suitability of various categories of stocks. Following this will help you avoid any disappointments in the markets. By now, you have learned about the different categories of stocks and their distinct behavior. The next questions I am sure would be, how much money should you invest in stocks and how many stocks should you invest this money in? So how many different companies you should invest your money in? To get an answer to this, you will have to watch my next video in the Equity Masterclass series. Until then, please do not forget to like and share my video. Please subscribe to my channel and do not forget to press the bell icon if you have already subscribed to the channel. Thank you. Happy learning.